Fossils Tell of Long Ago by Aliki. Fossils Tell of Long Ago for Jason, who found the fossil that inspired the book. Once upon a time, a huge fish was swinging, swimming around when along came a smaller fish. The big fish was so hungry, it swallowed the other fish whole. The big fish died and sank to the bottom of the sea. This happened 90 million years ago. How do we know? We know because the fish turned to stone. The fish became a fossil. A plant or animal that has turned to stone is called a fossil. Scientists can tell how old stones are. They could tell how old the fish fossil was. How did the fish become a fossil? Most animals and plants do not become fossils when they die. Some rot. Others dry up, crumble and blow away. No trace of them is left. This could have happened to the big fish. We would never have known it had lived. Instead, the fish became a fossil. And this is how it happened. When the big fish died, it sank into the mud at the bottom of the sea. Slowly, the soft parts of the fish rotted away. Only its hard bones were left. The bones of the fish had been... <clears throat> Fossils Tell of Long Ago by Aliki Fossils Tell of Long Ago for Jason who found the fossil that inspired the book once upon a time, a huge fish was swimming around when along came a smaller fish. The big fish was so hungry it swallowed the other fish whole. The big fish died and sank to the bottom of the sea. This happened 90 million years ago. How do we know? We know because the fish turned to stone. The fish became a fossil. A plant or animal that has turned to stone is called a fossil. Scientists can tell how old stones are. They could tell how old the fish fossil was. How did the fish become a fossil? Most animals and plants do not become fossils when they die. Some rot. Others dry up, crumble and blow away. No trace of them is left. This could have happened to the big fish. We would never know it had lived. Instead, the fish became a fossil, and this is how it happened. When the big fish died, it sank into the mud at the bottom of the sea. Slowly, the soft parts of the fish rotted away. Only its hard bones were left. The bones of the fish it had eaten were left too. The skeleton of the fish lay buried and protected deep in the mud. Thousands of years went by, more layers of mud covered the fish. Tons and tons of mud piled up. After a long time, the surface of the earth changed. The sea where the fish was buried dried out. The weight of the layers of mud pressed down. Slowly, the mud turned to rock. As that happened, groundwater seeped through the changing layers of mud. Minerals were dissolved in the water. The water seeped into the tiny holes in the fish bones. The minerals in the water were left behind in the fish bones. After a very long time, the bones turned to stone. The fish was a fossil. Some fossils, like fish, are actually parts of plants or animals that have turned to stone. Sometimes a fossil is only an imprint of a plant or an animal. 
Millions of years ago, a leaf fell off a fern-like plant. It dropped into the swampy forest soil, which is called peat. The leaf rotted away, but it left the mark of its shape in the peat. The peat with the imprint of the leaf hardened. It became a rock called coal. Coal is a fossil too. Look how perfect that leaf looks. Lots of other things have been found in coal, even dinosaurs. This shell was burned, buried whole, but when scientists split the rock, the shell crumbled away. This is only its imprint. Here's the other half. These are dinosaur tracks. They were made in fresh mud 115 million years ago. Sand filled the dinosaur's footprints in the mud. The sand hardened into a rock called sandstone. Millions of years later, fossil hunters dug through the rock. They found the fossil tracks, extract imprints of the dinosaur's foot. These footprints tell us a lot about Iguanodon. Scientists can tell how big it was and how fast it moved and that it walked on two legs. Not all fossils are found in stone. Some are found in the frozen ground of the Arctic. This ancient mammoth was a kind of elephant. It froze to death thousands of years ago. The grass it had been eating was still in its mouth. Part of it was showing through the melted ice. Scientists found pounds of grass and moss in its stomach. The mammoth was fresh enough to eat. I wouldn't dare. Millions of years ago, a fly was caught in the sticky sap of a tree. The sap hardened and became a fossil called amber. Amber looks like yellow glass. The fly was perfectly preserved in the amber. Other insects have been preserved in amber too. We have learned many things from the fish the fern, the fly, and the dinosaur tracks. Fossils tell us about the past. Fossils tell us there were forests where there now are deserts. Fossils of these plants and animals were found in that desert. That's the painted desert and the petrified forest. I've been there. Petrified means turned to stone. Wow, a fossil forest. Fossils tell us there was once was sea where there are mountains. These fossils of sea creatures were found on mountains. The earth has changed a lot since then. Many lands that are cold today were once warm. We find fossils of tropical plants in very cold places. Fossils tell us about strange creatures that lived on earth long ago. No such creatures are alive today. They have all died out. We say they are extinct. Some fossils are found by scientists who dig for them. Some fossils are found by accident. You too might find a fossil if you look hard. When you see a stone, look at it carefully. It may be a fossil of something that once lived. 